Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to this week's edition of the Kubert Community Meeting, where you have the opportunity to talk to developers and uh, bring issues out to the community for discussion. Um, so welcome, everybody. I have the link to our meeting notes posted out the chat. So if you could open up that document and add your name to the attendees list, I would much appreciate that. I'll also give you a, a minute or two to uh, fill in uh, any items to the agenda or open floor. And while you do that, I will set up my screen share. Stu, did I see that you approved the PR to the update to the index page? Yes, I looked at it and looked like everybody else had bought in. So I clicked approve. Uh, looks, uh, let me refresh the page. Tide still says pending, no? Yeah, Tide still says not mergeable. Should not have a do not hurt merge hold label. So it's approved, okay. it's just help. Okay. I'll Darn, I really wanted to uh, show that. Maybe we can uh, we can hack that real quick. Didn't even notice the hold. Uh, I already removed it. So oh, okay. It'll, it'll merge itself by the time the meeting ends, probably by the time it starts. Okay, um, I'm going to take the first uh, item and uh, talk about our update to the index page. Um, finally, just went ahead and uh, and got this uh, thrown out there. Uh, I've been waiting on the the Red Hat UI team for months to help me here, so I just went and did it myself. <laughs> and uh, we got uh, approval from uh, from. Um, the companies that use Kubert and um, were able to display their corporate logos on our front page. So we have right now we have uh, three end users, Sivo, uh, CoreWeave, and NVIDIA, and uh, vendors who uh, resell uh, Kubert uh, as uh, Equinix, Kubernetes, Kubernetes, Platform 9, Red Hat, and SUSE. And then uh, logos for uh, what we integrate to. 
Uh, if anybody else has any other ideas on uh, what uh, companies that we can add or other integrations to other softwares, um, feel free to tack on a pull request or let me know and I can do it. I think it's pretty awesome. I just sit here and look at it all day. <laughs> Okay, if there's nothing else on the agenda, um, Stu, do you want to talk about all things open? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I was just looking, I think I said the wrong dates last week. I, I swear it's the 16th, the 18th, but for some reason I can't find the page right now. It's I'm getting weird search results. Uh, so I do believe it's the 16th, the 18th. And just a heads up, we, we talked about doing a virtual booth last week. There was some immediate interest. And so if you are interested, please do sign up for a uh, virtual uh, attendee or virtual, what is the word I'm looking for? Uh, a conference pass. You, you can register for free for the virtual experience and we'll need at least that for now uh, in order to be able to set up a booth. And uh, I know we're, we're supposed to be working together on that. Um, so please catch me up on to what has happened with all things open in regards to COVID-19. Are we 100% virtual now? Uh, no, uh, so they announced the in-person uh, conference list as of last week and mid-flight, I had to reach out to them to say that I could only make it virtually. And I know that that's the case for you as well. So we're in the process of attempting to get our presentation switched to all to pure virtual. They don't know yet what that means and are still, so we're pending a response from them as to how we're gonna proceed. But that is separate, of course, from the booth itself, but that does apply to our talk. Okay. Yeah, and not only are we under a corporate travel restriction, but uh, um, I have a little bra medical bracelet on my hand that says, no nitrous and no flying. So I'm I'm under flight restriction until end of October. So I absolutely cannot go <laughs> unless I only want one eye. <laughs> That'd be a bad idea. Let's not do that. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, add an indent here. So. Hey, Stu, I just threw the link to, I think, the All Things Open pre um, website in the chat. And it, it says October 17th and 19th. Yes, thank you. So I've been saying the wrong days all along. Don't listen to me. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I was looking at the right thing. I can paste that link into the doc if you want. Yes, that is absolutely the link. Let's see. Let's see who's not here. Thank you, Chandler. It's getting a lot of background noise. Sorry, having a lot of difficulty with my earbuds right now. Okay. 
So, um, Stu, has any progress been made on the, the Raspberry Pi demo? No, I have not had time to revisit that. Uh, I've been a little bit under the gun with unrelated things. Um, going to start re-engaging that very soon, though. Okay. Yeah, because we're at September. <laughs> yep. And, uh, and, uh, to be honest, I haven't had much time to work on it either. I actually have an image on my Raspberry Pi, and I'm able to boot it, and that's about as far as I've gotten. Yeah, what's the working on Raspberry Pis? I got a, I got a ton of them, like eight of them here, clustered up. Do you, uh, what kind of Raspberry Pis do you have? They have the Raspberry Pi fours. Um, they got eight gigs of RAM, that kind of stuff. Oh my God, where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I got them all close up with LTSP and everything, so they just boot from random over the network via PXE, and then just run a cube admin join, uh, system. Uh, system D process or whatever you call it on start. Oh wow! Um, if you would like to uh, volunteer some uh, some electricity and network bandwidth to our demo, uh, that would be awesome. Sure. What do uh, What do I need to do? Um, am I joining a different uh, VPN or what's going on? Cold cluster. Let me. Uh, let's talk after the meeting and uh, and get you up to speed. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. In, uh, in the meantime, let me get you the, the pull request for this thing. Yeah, I'd be happy to run CI jobs or demos or whatever else. Jesus Christ, it's twice as much. And whoever, I, I through the magic of Zoom, couldn't tell who was talking a minute ago that said they had that cluster. Oh, me, Samuel, Sam Walker. Awesome, thank you. Yep. Yeah, uh, feel free to uh, follow that issue, Sam. And uh, I, I guess uh, Stu and I will open up the Zoom uh, <laughs> meeting um, probably later today or later this week and uh, also get some regularly scheduled events so we can all coordinate and get this uh, cluster um, built up. All right. The general idea is to have a internet dispersed um, Kubernetes cluster running um, Kubert and um, be able to demonstrate uh, workloads. All right, cool. Does it need to use take K3s or can I just use anything Kubernetes? Um, what were we what were we going to do, uh, Stu? I think we were using K3s, but if if you've got it working with something else, it can work with you. Um, whatever whatever's easiest, but it, it does work with K3s at least. All right, cool. Yeah, I mean, I can I can work with K3s. I just already got images built for like cube admin plus Creo, and then I just join a cluster. So they're based on uh, Debian. Uh, that's a factor. No, no problem at all. Do you see that uh, PCB that um, that Kevin came up with? He's got a. Somebody sent him uh, an experimental uh, Raspberry Pi with a, an NVMe lane or a PCIe, PCIe lane dedicated to an NVMe. Oh, nice. Like the compute modules with the exposed PC Express Gen 2 slot? Yep. I got a... Um, yeah, I got a sweet board. Nice. I got this uh, little IoT board, um, one's using the existing gigabit, and then the PCI Express one lane is using like another gigabit thing, so it's a little router that I put a CM4 on, it's tiny. Wow. Yeah, I got a, uh, a Nano 2S that's about the size of like the half of the palm of your hand, 
and it's got two, uh, it's, it has two ethernet ports on it. And I, I intended to use that as, as a router for my network. These and things are so fun. It was like $18. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's cheaper than this. This one was like 45 bucks, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've got all this heavyweight network gear and, and, uh, if I can replace it with a, a couple of these little uh, uh, 15 to $20 devices and position them around my house to have full Wi-Fi coverage, gosh, that would be amazing. Heck yeah, man. I've been trying to do something like that with, uh, I think it's called Batman AVD, the daemon that kind of just makes the mesh network based on, on Raspberry Pi or Wi-Fi Nix, which can be mm -hmm. replaced with the wi included Wi-Fi and Raspberry Pis. Mm -hmm. It would be amazing. Yeah, I'm tired of buying new routers every time we get a a new uh, an update to the the bandwidth or the protocol. They're not cheap either. Like my uh, I have a Nighthawk R a Linksys Nighthawk R seventy eight hundred. That sucker was like almost four hundred dollars new, and now it's a uh, it's obsolete. And what do you do with a thing? Throw it into the landfill? Yeah, dude, I um, I mean, if you all try to talk routers too, I got, I can, um, I don't know how relevant this is to Qbert. When I was at uh, Colo, I am not even using routers. I'm plugging right to two machines and doing dying on that. But I had it one time to the point where I was using Qbert and I ran uh, OPN Sense, and then I used the network add-on to add the other NIC, so it would actually act as a NAT using Qbert. And then send you know anything outbound outside the cluster through that VM to the uh, whatever upstream I was plugged into, which was like the Colo ISP. It's fun, man. Wow. I hate like proprietary hardware when it comes to routing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so many options these days. Well. Um, I don't see anybody populating a additional agenda or open floor points. Um, did we do a good bug scrub last week? Does not look like we did. Anyone want to run a bug scrub? Doesn't look like we have Peter or David with us this week. How about we skip? All in favor of skipping bug scrub? Works for me. Works for oh, me. All in favor of having a short meeting this week? Sounds like a yes. Yeah, indeed it does. But thanks for making it easy on me this week. Um, I'm I'm still crippled with uh, half of it, half vision in one of my eye, and it will be that way for another at least two months. So, anybody want details? Uh, feel free to text me. Highly recommend you guys take care of your eyes because this was absolutely insane what i just went through <laughs> my wife was very gracious to uh to really take up my part of family matters it's just awful what happened to your eye i had a retina detach so uh all through june i was uh, whenever i walked i would see lightning flashes in my vision and it's a clear blue sky outside, so I shouldn't be seeing lightning. <laughs> so I went to uh, two different doctors and they're like, uh, there might be something there. We don't see anything, nothing stands out. Um, then had a normal doc, uh, ophthalmologist appointment, um, got a new update to my prescription. My 
my uh, contact lenses. Woke up one day and um, I had about half of my vision, it was just black, um, going diagonally from bottom, bottom left to top right of my right eye. Oh my gosh. They uh, called in the ophthalmologist. They, uh, they were like, yeah, come on in. And they're like, oh yeah, we see big problems. Um, you're going to the hospital right right now. So they uh, they uh, arranged surgery like right on the spot, and so they didn't even let me go home. They uh, they had me drive from the eye doctor to the hospital. Usually you go to the ER and like you're waiting there for a couple hours. Nope, they uh, they're like right this way, right this way, and I was on the on the table like 15 minutes later, and. Uh, of course, they're asking me what I what I've eaten and drank all day, and making sure that uh, I hadn't. And uh, so they put me under anesthesia and did a laser surgery on me. The whole thing was, I think it was like four hours from start to finish, um, from my first uh, eye doctor appointment that morning to the time I was done with eye surgery, and then. I was blind. They put in a an, an air bubble inside of my eye, and the idea is for it to roll around inside the eye and smooth out your retina. So now I got this air bubble that's bouncing around inside of my eye, and it gives me headaches and gives me motion sickness all day. And so like it's it's still hard to do sit down and do like eight hours worth of work on a computer or just have to step away and take a break. How did it happen? If you don't mind me asking, like, did we just rubbing your eyes too much or like, was there some infection? Oh, they were, they were really concerned that I got in a fight. And uh, I'm like, no, there's no fight club going on here. Like, <laughs> no bruising to my face. And, um, uh, but uh, I have astigmatism pretty bad, which is like an elongation of your eye. And, uh, and they just um, wrote it off as uh, an effect of astigmatism in old age. <clears throat> so like, we, have a, we have a lot of military air traffic around here. And I was concerned that I, maybe they were lasering the, <laughs> the community or something, because I'm always looking up at the at the aircraft and and they're like no it's not a it's not uh they have a very um indicative injury type and mine is a tear not a not like a cut or a or a single point burn so nothing nothing fancy just old age and hope you get better soon. I got air traffic over here myself because like we got we're by a naval base in Virginia Beach, so I'm hoping it'll shoot me with lasers anytime soon. But yeah, it, there's a lot of air traffic too because of the, the Afghanistan ordeal. Um, we get helicopters and and aircraft flying over multiple times a day. And... Oh yeah! Oh yeah! So yeah, now, now I have this air bubble in my eye and I'm a rock climber. And so I've been, I had a, a, a trip scheduled to Yosemite and the, the mountain passes are 10,000 feet. So uh, I can't exceed a uh, 3000 feet elevation or risk uh, having my eye uh, collapse because of the pressure, the, the pressure differences. Can't go on the on an airplane, same because of the same thing. The, the pressure could cause it collapse in my eye, and, and then I would lose the whole eye. But I've got this uh, medical band on my wrist now, to in case I get in a car accident or something. They cannot give me uh, any kind of nitrous for anxiety or painkiller. I'm like, well, what did they do then? They're <laughs> like, doctor says they have other other tools to help. Yeah, 
Gotcha, gotcha. I don't know why I say it, then I hope you feel better, man. That sounds like a lot you're going through. Yeah, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm fine now. Now it's just inconvenience. I have to cancel everything that I planned on doing this fall. No rock climbing and no all things open. No trip to Raleigh. Which uh, I'm not sure what the situation is where you live, but here in, in the US, the, the Delta variant is just going wild across the United States. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the US. It's, um, I'm trying to see more people wear masks. I've been vaccinated, but I might start doing that too. Yeah, we're, we're in uh, Olympia, Washington, and it's a pretty ultra liberal town. <laughs> so our, we uh, our, we have mask mandates and everybody follows it to uh, pretty closely. And even here, um, our, we have over 700 new infections week over week. The, the met, really the metric I've been following is the week over week new infections. And it is right now it is double what it ever was back even last year during a lockdown. Oh boy. Yeah, it's uh it's gonna be rough. Our kids are due to go back to school next week and just the community is really scared and <laughs> how they're gonna do it. We're we're not sending our kids back to school. We're we're gonna do something else. I was gonna say my uh Co-worker actually just like the other day we we're supposed to hang out on um, Tuesday, um, but he gets an email from uh, I don't know his teacher or something the administrator. Pretty much um, his kids they have, to, they have to quarantine because the teacher was not vaccinated and ended up getting COVID. Um, oh my gosh! And as they were all in the same classroom, now they all have to quarantine for nine days, including the parents. Yeah, jeez, how reckless! Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Sorry, I didn't catch where you were at. Did you say Massachusetts? Uh, Virginia Beach. Oh, okay. And, yeah, Virginia Beach, Virginia. No, nice. I have visited Virginia Beach a lot over the years. It's nice over here. We were just talking about going to the, uh, I don't know if it was like uh, an all-in-one thing or another one, but um, some event nearby. Um, just because I, I mean I like it here because like there's a lot of things to do nearby as far as like you know once COVID's over travel things. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, um, let's uh, close out this meeting, and uh, and I'll post a uh, a comment to that uh, the all things open demo issue uh, and get a. A meeting scheduled to uh, to work together on the Raspberry Pis. Awesome, sounds good. Do you know if it'll be today or should I make time tomorrow? Or? Um, Stu, what's your schedule look like for today? Is he still here? I have a meeting at one thirty my time. Um, past that, it looks like my day is pretty open. All right. I mean, as far uh, as meetings, I'm busy, but <laughs> I can be. Yeah. <laughs> How about uh, we take a, a bio break and uh, we open it up at, and we open Zoom back up in a half an hour and we can just work? Okay. That'll work. Yep. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. I'm going to shut her down. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone.